All right, so the, the lineup, the Sundance 2024 is online. Let's see, animated, when he loses his ninth life, fate steps in to set him on a transformative journey. This one sounds like trash. So many, so many movies are probably gonna be about like identity crisis. Like that's, I feel like that's the theme of 2024. They're living in isolation and then they have to adjust to modern society. Everything is so on the nose. Maybe it's just the descriptions, but it's so like blatant what the the theme it feels like forced themes is that um yeah jesse eisenberg is that him yeah hey it is it is him writer director jesse eisenberg okay i didn't know he was doing this kind of stuff what a weird cast honestly it's such a weird i can't believe justin timberlake actually like played a role like this election election democracy threats against the like again this is also this is also oh justice system united states it's, it's all agenda back stuff and i don't think that this is their intention i think this is just what hit them i think most people who are making who, who are making films who are pretentious enough to be able to to pitch with such arrogance to actually get a budget are going to have some agenda behind it however however this on the other hand this is i'm a sucker for like the um love death and robots type type animation styles data set from black communities see see what i'm saying it's like, there's no like data set. It, it takes an AI data set of humanity and psychology, like the, the natural, whatever. It's just, oh, it's black, whatever. It's, a, it's always something, even something beautiful backed by ideology. There seems to be a trend here of, of like bra brave people that are not actually doing like brave things. Like none of this stuff is actually like brave, but it's just supposed to be touted as such. Oh, so brave. It's like, that's the theme I'm seeing here. This is interesting. This line right here, how to love your mom. It's probably not gonna be in English, but I don't know. I mean, I, the rest of it seems kind of whatever. Wait, this one might actually, this looks uncanny. I might save this one. Again, it's like an artist on the path to find success. No, it's gotta be a black artist on the way every time. It's like, if I made a movie about myself, I wouldn't go like, oh, a, an Indian, an oppressed minority in America is, is creating a great work of art. No, it's an artist is creating a great work of art. I feel like these, you like, oh, they're defending their thing against Nazi skin. And it's like, oh, you're so brave for going against Nazis. You know, how brave of you. Uh, clearly a controversial, controversial take. I feel like if you reject any of these movies, you're gonna get so much backlash, so much shit from people online. Like, oh, they rejected my movie because they're supporting Nazis or whatever. Like, you put them in a tough position, you know? This movie is a psyop for sure. Like, uh, you know cuties, like the pedophile stuff? That's what this is, like, oh, the mother never got to come of age herself. Yeah, the mother did come of age. If she had a child, then she ha had a coming of age. G having like sexual liberation at 16 is not coming of age. They reimagine what it means to govern with their iPhones and, and painted nails. This one sound like, sounds like it's gonna be a psyop, but I don't know. This kind of stuff can be done artfully. If you're gonna be this on the nose about it, like, you know, they made a parody making fun of this kind of stuff. Like Lonely Island made a song called I Just Had Sex. And the lyrics is, I just had sex and it felt so good. It's like, they make fun of people who just have no subtlety. And they did this when I was in like middle school and people are still like, they still don't, they still can't get the joke. This scene is really poorly lit if you're gonna try to make a horror thing. There's too much lighting in the back. I mean, I don't know, I'm not like watching the movie or anything. I'm not trying to like, oh, I'm some expert, you know, but like just throw on a vignette, like see this? This seems like it, it could be interesting. There's barely any of these are from the perspective of, of the bad guys supposedly, right? Like a redemption arc. This seems like the first one I've seen so far. I'll leave that in a new tab. This anarchic trio becomes the unlikely figurehead of a civil rights movement. So anarchy and civil rights don't go together. If you were about anarchy, you wouldn't be pushing for civil rights. To save their mother tongue? Why would you need to get into legislation to save your language? That's a cultural thing. This one is for sure a psyop. I actually, I think I heard about this one actually like completely separate from reading this just now. This one's a bit of a wild card actually, I think. It seems like there's something, something that's gonna drive this, like some theme that they're gonna force, but I have no clue what it is. I wanna see some, something experimental. I wanna see, and not even experimental, I wanna see something like a, I wanna get the vibe I got when watching Black Mirror over here. 
or something like that, you know? Something I, I just can't expect. I feel like if you just watch short films on YouTube, you just go on YouTube, you look up short film, you'll be able to generally understand how these kinds of things go. Right, this is a psyop for sure. It, it takes place in a Rio de Janeiro slum. So it's, it's, at first I was like, nah, not really. But then I remembered all of these psyops are about having, are about a political party having a chokehold on the arts or on what the, the broader mainstream society will consider to be better arts. This one might be interesting. I don't think I'm gonna watch it though. Actually, I don't think this is gonna be that good, but I think analyzing it and, and seeing what they have to say, seeing how they would make it would give me a lot of insight as to these kinds of artists. Look at these, look at these like six right here. This is such a weird, like this is to this, this is to this, this is this. It's like, and look at the lengths of the descriptions. It's like, oh, maintain social order, policing in the United States, American policing embodies one word, power. And then this is like, another impoverished section, six figures selling marijuana. It's gonna be like political stuff in there. It's like very, very clear to see how the entire movie's gonna play out. And then these two seem like they're like completely separate artsy films made by people who don't really have any care for any of this kind of stuff. This is just a horror movie. And then this is probably some, like just probably a bunch of beautiful visuals that they managed to throw some kind of vague story in there. And then this is Realm of Satan and then like gay sex worker or something like that. Like it's a really weird parallel between these three or these six. Terry Goon? Whose last name is Goon? I guarantee you every single person that goes to watch this one, Sue Bird, every single person that goes to watch this one is virtue signaling. All of them. Literally dude, people who watch basketball, like men who watch men's basketball, just normal NBA, are unable to justify why I should watch basketball or like why, or what makes basketball fun. They're unable to justify it. It's brainless entertainment, like TikTok and all this stuff. It just, it's the same sort of thing. They're unable to actually provide an explanation as to what value it has in terms of entertainment. WNBA is the last thing anyone would watch if they actually value their time. This could be interesting, maybe. Not for me particularly, but for others. This one's most likely a psyop. 80% chance. Black people who dedicate their lives to a cause of utmost importance, making white people's lives easier. See, I can't even tell what's ironic and what's not. I'll tell you this much, dude. People in tribes that live in this sort of tribal way don't care about climate change. When 93-year-old Thelma Post gets duped by a phone scammer pretending to be her grandson, dude, just don't give her a phone. Amazon labor union? This had to be paid for, man. Bipartisan group of US defense. Like I'm already bored reading that dude. Friend of 30 years coming out as a trans woman. Again, another, another psyop. From a Texas border town, finds her morals challenged while serving an NSA contractor, a sarcastic gun loving vegan yogi and CrossFit fanatic, soft-spoken actress, Laura Franco. Like Laura Sanko? Monster living in her closet. What is this? This is like, really vague like i'm i'm completely confused oh i thought this was a girl in the picture this is a this is a vampire story your monster encourage us to liberate our inner demons i mean i i am actually interested in the psychology of sexual archetypes and her latest short aspirational slut yeah i'm not gonna watch this hey that's uh that's my credit card i have the sapphire this seems like if they're gonna go like the action route and just make it an exciting like thrill ride, this seems like it could be a like a really entertaining one actually. No other pictures. I feel like this one's just gonna be really, really pessimistic honestly. Single film ticket in person is $30. Even if I see 10 films in person, that's $300. If I do this $850, I get 10 access to in-person screenings. It's the same thing. The only difference is, so this I can buy now and then reserve the movies I want to go to. And by the time I go there, it'll probably be pretty much sold out, right? Like the seats, the seats will all be filled up. So I'll just go whatever, to whatever movies are available, honestly. I'm honestly not tripping about like, oh, I have to go to the specific movies that I want to see. Nothing really here is actually enticing to me. Like, oh, I have to see this one, I have to see this one. Really, I'm just more excited to meet other people who are into film and just talk to them and just to have like deep, deep conversations about storytelling and all that stuff. And I'm gonna I'm get that, I'm gonna get that even if I don't pay for any tickets, you just talk to random people over there. But yeah, that's the lineup. 
not terrible, not like, you know, it's not great, but you know, I'll watch any of these. It's not like there's, there's any of them that I'd be like, oh, I like, there's no point in me watching this waste of time. Like all of these seem fine. And I'm sure that it's, the descriptions don't do it justice. I'm sure there's a lot of bangers in here. I'm sure there's a lot of hidden gems in here. It's hard to know if, if what they're trying to do is, is like marketing, just marketing like, oh, trying to have the political angle so that people who resonate with this ideology can come to this thing, you know? I'm excited. <laughs>